In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the top-level metal structure in a CCD, in a charge-coupled device, it's a visible image sensor, a silicon-based image sensor. In a previous video, I drew out a silicon CCD array and showed how charge gets shuttled out. I'm going to redraw it here. Okay, so we're going to have the array, the array, Try to draw it a little slower so the lines are more defined. It's going to have pixels, pixels, and then more in this direction. Draw it out. Okay. This is a 4x4 four four array of pixels, 16 pixels. There are 4 pixels, oops, 4 pixels. In this dimension, four pixels, and four pixels in this dimension. Let me number them. Uh, well, I won't number them. Let's say we had an electron here. Oh, I forgot the serial shift register. Okay. It's one pixel high, and it has an equal number of pixels to the array that's above it. Let's say we want this electron to come out to this capacitance and then an amplifier. We know from the previous video that we first had to move it into this pixel and then we move it into this pixel okay, and then we move it into this pixel okay, and then we move it here and we move it here and we move it here and then finally out onto the capacitor. Well, how does that happen? Let me redraw this uh, in, a, in a different dimension. I'm going to label the pixels here. So there's pixel 1, pixel 2, and pixel 3. I'm going to scroll down. In the silicon, let me draw the silicon. There's one side. There's the other side. Okay. So we can just draw the NP boundary. Remember the P-type is usually much thicker than the N-type, so there's N, there's P-type. This remember is usually, but not always, grounded. Okay, let's look at what goes on in a pixel. So if you remember from a previous video that there is metal, metal, in on top of the pixel separated by oxide and let me draw that I'll, I'll, I'll start drawing and I'll, and I'll talk as I draw on top of each pixel there's a set each pixel in the basic case has three metal phases associated with it and I'll draw start drawing this out these are metal notice that this this metal here is distinct from this metal here, which is distinct from this metal here, and they're not touching each other. Okay, that's an important point. There's that metal, or metal. You notice this kind of this structure. Oops, oh, that section. metal. There's an overlapping structure and that's so they can pass charge between them. And this goes on to the end of the array. Just draw that going off to infinity. Okay. What we have uh, with this metal, oh it is separated from the underlying silicon by oxide. So I'm going to sketch with green everywhere there's oxide oxide. It fills in the gaps between. There's no connection, no DC connection between these metal electrodes filling in everywhere with oxide. There's oxide even here. So this is oxide. And I don't know if I have the right color. This is metal. Let me draw the pixels. 
let's say one pixel, just imaginary, it's there. Another pixel is there. We'll label this as pixel one, this is pixel two, and this is pixel three. Let me scroll back up so you can see what I was talking about. Pixel one, pixel two, and pixel three. We want to hand the charge off between the different pixels. Let's say there's an electron that finds its way in the system and we want to capture it in pixel one. Well, what you would usually do, let me get back to the right color, we would call this phase one, clock phase one, this is phase two, phase three. Each pixel has three phases in this basic example, and then it repeats. There's phase one, phase two, phase three, phase one, and so on. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's make phase two equal to plus nine volts. Phase three is equal to minus nine volts, and phase one is equal to minus nine volts. Now if you're an electron sitting in the silicon, let's say you, you, you get created down here, and you're going to go to somewhere within this pixel. Where are you going to go? Well, you're going to try to go to the highest potential of the system, the plus 9 volts. So you swim up here, and you find yourself right there. Okay. Why aren't you going to sit here? Well, that potential, the potential right above you there is minus 9 volts, so you don't want to sit there. Why aren't you going to sit here? Well, it's the same thing. The potential above you is minus 9 volts, and you'd rather be sitting near the plus 9 volt potential. So that's where you go. And you're captured there. You're stuck. You cannot pass through the oxide to that metal electrode, and that's good because we want to read you out later. Uh, and you just sit there until we do something with you. Well, let's do something with you. Let me backtrack a little bit. Okay, that electron is sitting there. Now, let's start shuttling you out. Let's go back to this color. So let's leave phase 1 at minus 9 volts. Phase 2 will remain at plus 5 volts. And actually, something I forgot to write, this phase 1 is equal to this phase 1. So this is also at minus 9 volts. Okay. Let's change phase 3. Instead of being minus 9 volts, let's make it plus 9 volts. Now, you as an electron, you don't care whether you're he where you are, whether you're here, whether you're here, whether you're here, whether you're here, because anywhere in this stretch here, you're very close to the plus 9 volts, and you like that because that's the highest potential in the system. You don't like the minus 9 volts that you see here, and you don't like the minus 9 volts that you see here. So you're free to swim about anywhere between those two phases of the clock. And let me backtrack a little with my colors. So, let's say that now, instead of this phase 2 being plus 9 volts, I change it to minus 9 volts. Now you as an electron are in a situation very similar to what you were in the beginning, uh, what you saw in the beginning. You don't like the minus 9 volts. You want to get away from the minus 9 volts, and you want to go towards the plus 9 volts. So you move out of this pixel and over to this guy. And this electron is now captured underneath this clock phase, which is at plus 9 volts. And its nearest neighbors, on, on one side it has minus 9 volts and it doesn't like that. And on the other side it also has minus 9 volts and it doesn't like And you can see that what you can do, because these electrodes are overlapping, you can shuttle this charge in, in a similar pattern all the way out the device between each clock phase in a very controlled fashion. An important point is that this electron is contained within the silicon as it shuttles along. And I mentioned this, it, it, it can't get through that oxide in the normal case. It can't get through that oxide and into that metal. And that's good 
because if it went into the metal, uh, we wouldn't be able to read it out as a signal. It would just uh, be part of the current that that metal is pulling out of the silicon. We want there to be a separation between the metal and the underlying silicon, uh, which the oxide provides, and we want there also to be enough dielectric coupling, enough capacitive coupling between the two, so that uh, uh, you don't have to use extreme clock voltages to shuttle this charge along to create the kind of electrostatic effects in the silicon that are needed to shuttle this out. And silicon dioxide also provides that. An analogy that often gets drawn for the CCD is the bucket brigade. Bucket brigade analogy. And for the bucket brigade analogy, you can imagine each one of these clock phases, phase one, phase two, phase two, phase three, in each pixel being a different person with a bucket. So pixel one has one person, two people, three people. And then the next pixel also has three people. Three people. And they each have a bucket. They each have a bucket. And they take turns pouring their contents into the next person's bucket until all of the water or electrons are collected and read out. And the way we make these uh, bucket transitions happen in the CCD is by playing with the clock phase voltages, which the clocks, the metal clock lines are separated from the underlying silicon by the silicon dioxide. So there's no DC connection between the silicon and, this, and the metal. Incidentally, uh, one thing that is necessary for this system to operate properly is that this oxide is in fact a good oxide and it doesn't have a contact with the underlying silicon. It doesn't allow a connection between the metal and the underlying silicon in a DC sense. And sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes the oxide gets damaged. So let's say there's a damage point and then for whatever reason maybe the metal spikes into the silicon. The metal spikes into the silicon or some other effect happens so that now there's a DC connection between the silicon and this metal up above. What happens then? Well, that's a big problem because uh, it results in either electrons and, hole, and or holes being sucked out or pushed in depending on the phase of this clock. So since there's a DC connection, a DC short now in this guy, let's say it was at, I don't know, plus 9 volts where this terminal down here is at ground. Well, you're going to suck a lot of electrons out through that guy. The effective incident, and you are pushing current this way. And that will cause all sorts of nasty effects with your system. And so a necessary requirement for CCDs to function well is that this oxide is of very high quality.